Hi everyone, a very uh, happy new year to all of you and thank you all for carving out some time for attending today's webinar on the episode 25 of the Business X Learning Series, Invest, Scale, Value and Exit. To all the attendees out there, please type in any questions you might have in the Q&A section and we'll try to answer as many as possible at the end of the session. I would now like to welcome our speaker, Mr. Gaurav Marya, Chairman and Founder of the Franchise India Group. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sonali. And welcome, friends. And very, very happy New Year to all of you. May this year be after this very, very tiring year 2020. I think 21 should be a, a great year for everyone, for uh, for our businesses to move forward and uh, some businesses to not only come back, but start thriving. So this is going to be a very important year, uh, as I see. Uh, and we've already started seeing, seeing the signals in the last quarter. Uh, the, the whole space of investment is coming alive. Uh, there was actually about two odd quarters of uh, absolute null in the market, but uh, we have seen the, the market really in that. While the stock market has done well, and I think a lot of good IPOs really uh, has helped in, in building the momentum. And I see uh, this uh, to continue 2021, 2022, and 2023. There will be a run uh, which would continue to be there. Uh, I feel also there will be a lot of consolidation in the market and a lot of uh, you know opportunities of m a would arise in the next uh, uh, two odd quarters. Particularly, I think uh, a lot has already started happening, a lot of uh, discussions. Uh, we are seeing in our clients a lot of work started to happen, especially last quarter. Uh, we were not that busy, I will be honest, uh, for the for the first two quarters of uh, this year, but uh, then last quarter had a lot of action going on. Especially as this the business X actually gets a lot of startups uh, really coming in, and this was uh, getting a little dried. And uh, some of our startups, and one startup really got uh, last week uh, uh, one strong investment uh, acquired by a, a larger group, uh, while it's a, uh, largely a, a you know a swap of equity. Uh, but it's a good deal which came up. So it's a it's an interesting times. Uh, we look forward for really uh, building up this uh, next two quarters. Uh, significantly. So today's discussion is really about uh, early stage companies, you know, whenever they're looking at exiting, even the companies which are there in the system and built it for many years, and you want to really look at an exit, uh, sometimes they get disappointed by the valuation because we've done a lot of series in the last, this is 25th, but in earlier episodes, we've done a lot of work on, on how to value your businesses and what are the considerations and so on and so forth. And we got some interest of people coming and saying that, look, uh, by valuation, I was expecting such and I was getting a much lesser valuation and uh, and sometimes it is a perspective of how you look at your businesses because you worked hard on the business and you've invested your time energy and effort uh, but the investor looks at it very very differently and, and has to have a very strong neutral I would say approach to the business uh, you are always biased about your own business because you you built it you work very hard you're emotional and your expectation is very high on that and uh, and the buyer comes from uh, from the very very neutral value, so it takes out a lot of uh, adjacent components of the, of your business and and really sees the merit of the business. And sometimes the valuation is significantly lower than your expectations is. So today we want to talk about uh, some of the softer ways, uh, you know, how you can improve. I think uh, you get into that space. I would say that. Uh, you need to be really definite and when you want to do that because it's not really that uh, uh, you might not be ready for your businesses because a lot of times businesses are presented to us and either they are delayed in terms of reaching out to us and and coming to us and saying that look this is a time i want to really exit or uh, raise capital or they're premature you need to have a right timing and that's very important to determine and you need to go to a maybe a, a good consultant to really take an advice or even approach business x and our teams uh, we will also be able to advise you at what stage you need to really start doing this exercise. But you don't continue to uh, put some kind of a foundation stones if you are going on that path. And that's very, very important. Uh, and uh, and if you don't put that path uh, right, uh, then you will not be able to reach there. So uh, the valuation, obviously, uh, we have seen in the past, we have done this kind of, uh, the ways of doing valuation. The typical structures are that how do you do your uh, pricing of your business uh, versus your earnings, which is the which is the most common practice. You also can discount your future earnings, uh, future uh, earning potentials. Uh, you can also see your past gains, uh, 
you can also i mean there has to be also uh, some kind of uh, what i call assets and liabilities to be subtracted out of the valuation sometimes the uh, liabilities are not very defined i take this in the last uh, uh, episode of mine i, I defined how uh, investors would look at your balance sheet and and sometimes this uh, a lot of other assets which look great to you are not so great for for potential investors to look at it uh, so and these are all would be determine your value and sometimes it comes a very lower number and which you you're not expecting and sometimes they uh, your expectation from your own business is not right so what are the 10 things uh, which would be outside the just the, the i would say your balance sheet and the overall industry aspects and the size of the business and so on so uh, something would be what would be somebody saying that is a uh, my voice is not audible is it audible uh, sonali can you hear me well uh yes sir it's audible to me it's perfectly okay. fine to me yaar okay so sayed you have to see from your end i think uh, it's not uh, uh so it's so, all right so thanks for the feedback but uh, you need to see at your end uh, sayed if it is not right so outside this uh, uh, the parameters what are the 10 things which uh, to me would make a lot of difference in terms of when you approach a Uh, a buyer and you want to really present yourself the first thing is how do you set yourself apart fundamentally if any buyer is there in the market to look at a category in a, uh, or an industry and a player like you in the market then they are obviously looking at other players also what is your niche and how you define that niche uh, would be very very important and how you determine that niche it can be your consumer group it can be the that part of it it can be your product itself it has its own Uh, audience and own customer base and so forth it can be how you are uniquely placed in a particular market uh, that can also be different sometimes you are very strong in some market and you taken some market share in that particular market so what is your niche are you are you how you present yourself as a business is very very important to me and i feel that the niche businesses businesses which have their own positioning it might be smaller but they become more attractive than businesses which are very generic in nature and have no particular niche of theirs uh, would not make sense and that something to me is a very important aspect how do you really start defining your business now these days we are getting these uh, uh, we working with almost about 20 different uh, ev brands you know these electric vehicle brands and most of them so leave, leave aside couple of them uh, are very early stage startup they have both assembly line everybody is trying to do the same thing and i asked the same question to every single startup and said this is great idea everybody wants to get into ev space because this space looks very interesting in 4 5 years but what is your uniqueness uh, it can be through technology it can be through over a product offering it can be market which you really capture like one of the companies came from uh, one hyderabad and i advised them just to stay in one state and just go on a capture and market share in one state rather than spreading themselves thin because they didn't have any kind of a product advantage and if you can go and create some kind of a distribution advantage or market barrier in a particular market then probably can be uh, a strategy on that so you need to really see where are you placed uh, and at some times the technology at the back end or the offering would become similar pretty much everybody has a similar kind of product and how do you really now position in that and there would be people players who would go with their own market share and what their dominance is in they created in the in the market share or through distribution which they build some would do they from their offering some with their brand positioning so you really have to find out where it is and when you are early stage companies you have no ability to do all so you need to really pick up one or two points and go deeper into that and find your own niche that would be to me a very very important aspect i'll give you an example recently one of the companies we were advising just announced what a 3 days uh, four days back uh, uh, they were in a edutech space a company called neo stencil this is a company we've been advising uh, for last 5 uh, odd months and uh, they were in the in a uh, obviously online training space uh, edutech product and there are similar so many different companies which were there in the market but they were doing only uh, more focused on uh, government jobs and uh, and so it was very attractive positioning you know the kind of work they've done the kind of uh, tutors they have already onboarded and things of that nature found their absolute niche and so they were acquired uh, by another large uh, edutech company and that has been just announced uh, this is not of information is public so <clears throat> it was announced in about a, i think a 3 4 days back so now these are the companies to me which are very clearly finding their niche 
and there are similar lot of similar companies which are out there which have no advantage i mean they all have pretty much the similar kind of a technology product and why would a large company which is already gone ahead space why would they look at these businesses and buy i think now if they had a very clear differentiation on the content or the differentiation on the delivery or a particular target group which they have actually uh, aggregated to me would have made a big big difference second point second point is that how do you really present your strengths to uh, investor is also very important you know how do you really go out and unlock the the capabilities in your organization very very clearly because any investor who looks at investing into a business clearly looks at a future doesn't is not so much interested in what you're doing today what your business has a potential to deliver 3 years from now 5 years from now that's very important is there a some kind of inherent value some kind of research work you've done some kind of a, a strength area you have which are which makes you future ready and you go out and promote this part to uh, your investors and clearly do that and then also try to take that space in a public domain you know i see these days in every founder is very active on linkedin uh, but they're trying to repeat themselves nobody is trying to take a position so if you try to take uh, it might sometimes look like a self propaganda but you need to take clear position in the market and investor keep watching keep watching that space they keeps watching that where you are coming from and what you are really trying to deliver that and that something you need to be very very particular and there is no shame in terms of doing a little bit it looks like a propaganda yourself promoting yourself but it's very important to go out and create and claim that space nobody else might have that maybe there are similar companies but they've not taken a space at least from a commuting bomb view point and i think people who are more visible and like these are dark kitchens now dark kitchens there are many many players who come in the market almost everybody has a dark kitchen infrastructure available in that now whoever would go and take a right positioning would able to aggregate better brands and hence would get better traction on the platforms and would be able to get them that thing like these days i mean uh, uh, the company like a uh, <coughs> fasos just tied up with second third largest uh, a burger chain company called wendy's and they went out and say all deck dark kitchens of fasos would start doing wendy's now this is a good story uh, from a market view point and it's purely market built up uh, situation so it's a it's a good pr uh, to really Uh, come for a company like Fasos. Fasos lacked a credible global brand, and there was a Burger King story going on on the right side, and there was a clearly uh, space where uh, big IPO has just happened. Market was very bullish about this whole situation, and having a situation like a Wendy's announcement, which can unlock a bigger value uh, for shareholders, investors, and so on, for was a very clearly a good time. It has to have also a strong backing. You know, MT promises MT. Uh, uh spaces would not work so you need to really see when you start promoting your strengths and you try to unlock your uh, strength areas you need to be very very clear that you are you're backed by a solid and i think otherwise they'll fall flat uh, uh very very important third point is how do you streamline your operations it's very important that organizations and i've seen of people investors backing out uh not taking up opportunities and businesses because they feel uh it was very complex or it was not very productive or they had a lot of other issues to really streamline or bind the companies it looked very confused one of the companies we were advising and uh, we were trying to buy a co-working space for a, for a large player and they looked at a business and they, when they looked at the business they realized that this was not really they want to buy and purely they as it was great everything was great but it was too complex as operations they they were so inefficient it it had no meaning to me that why this business would not uh, not run and uh, the answer was that they finally made an offer and say we would like to just take the real estate we don't try to take the business because the business was very complex and it was not really making any sense uh, it was a badly managed operations so investors like a very smooth very defined uh, operations structure which you can see in a very very i mean window for a investor to look at your business is not as you have you have built the business over the years right and the investors would spend maybe couple of days to really see your business in a couple of days if they don't see the assessment of business coming smooth to them uh, they would withdraw they have no time more than that to do that a typical dd exercise i have seen is not more than a couple of days and that also revolves around more financial and and the softer things are left around and softer things tell a lot of things to you uh, and they reflect to you uh, uh, because if you start interviewing some of your key people and understand your operation then if they feel that the this is not a very efficient operations it lacks productivity and 
lack some kind of discipline then this would not go in fourth point is again very similar how do your leadership is defined again i have multiple times in my episode said they need to make a founder redundant if the founder is there is is important but he is not that important that to me uh, makes a value of a business much higher uh, unlike a lot of people say that a founder is a critical part of the uh, business uh, it is from a business design and his contribution to run and contribute to the business but it, if it is over dependent on a founder then the business is not good because the business would not go to the next level and how you are building your team you know and one of the companies i recently was working with a good startup backed by a very uh, a seasoned uh, serial entrepreneur and uh, and i was talking to the team and in every discussion they would bring about six people uh, every time in discussing with me and most of them when the four i have actually not spoken a word and they just sitting on the meeting and these are long meetings one one and a half hour two hours meeting and i felt that why these people come if they don't have to contribute anything and they're just listening so it's a it 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 would sound to you that they have just been there in the system but they are also been prepared to become a part of the management structure so they are getting a lot of information they are part of a collective decision making all these are important part of your culture and these are organizations which are don't like i mean if you if you go to a company and you meeting only the on the founder and you don't have anybody else to do that it shows very different reality but if you meet a team which has a probably a similar level of knowledge base and capability been developed and they have participated in almost all major decision making in the structure it gives you a lot of comfort now this is uh, lacking in the classic businesses classic businesses are very clearly centered around the founder and the managing directors and the likes of them and they don't have the collective participation they're very instruction based uh, people so this has to change at this stage people like that kind of thing so they are like uh that there is a collective uh, leadership structure which is very very strongly been placed so the people are involved in the entire part of the journey of uh, smallest decision making even very very small decisions which they want to really take taking on a consultant like i mean we were pitching one company and they were just taking on as as, as a consultant now this decision is very much in control with the with the ceo who was the founder of the business but he always would bring in his complete team uh for that decision making so that to me reflects a very strong uh, point of uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, judgment uh, structure it's a very clearly a team play and uh, dividing the capabilities around uh, uh, this piece so this becomes uh, uh, the fourth point the fifth point is how business is relevant for current times you know sometimes your business is doing well and you had a strong customer base but you not acquiring enough at this moment so if any business shows me that you were 2029 uh, 19 you were you had more customer base coming to you and the previous year even more and now it is actually declined while you have still the business residual business has grown maybe your turnover has grown but your new acquisition has declined uh, to me that is also a red flag uh, that really creates in that thing that why are you not becoming more and more relevant so if i see the stream going up that you are even even we more demand by customers now that to me is a very big reflection so so even if you are going into getting into that you might be in a comfort zone at this stage because your cash flows and your current customer base is giving you enough this happens in media companies a lot of times uh, but you're not focused too much on new acquisition so before you even present to your new buyer you need to go back to the market and start bringing it it brings a huge confidence because again they are not really understanding in depth why you're not doing it at this stage for them it is a reflection that you might not be attracting uh the new customer base uh, today if any media business comes to me and presents that look i have a very healthy clientele and i have retained those clientele and so on so forth but i am not acquired enough that tells me that you are not so much in your growing side of it maybe you are unable to encash your relationship uh and it would eventually dry so two things to me makes very important how your new customer acquisition is happening and and the previous one are retained and they continue to spend more with you so these are these are very clear signals if you show me retention better a new acquisition also happening and also your overall spend going up if this data really comes and spend down they think that to me uh, investors would like it another important area is that how your current and older clients uh, speak about you how your vendors are talking about you and ecosystem is talking about you so these are all very important and touchy points in in the system especially because you if your business is dependent on a lot of suppliers and how these suppliers are being with you and how these suppliers have also evolved with you so those are also very strong capability what are the relationship you enjoy in that you know any business is not in isolation every business is linked with a lot of players say i was evaluating uh, one of the 
liquor businesses and for them they presented that they were one of the top most uh, uh, players for uh, you know ub and other players and so on so so great data was very important because how they're enjoying this relationship the future sites they would open up uh, would be purely backed by these companies because they believe in their business model they put a lot of money behind him they do a lot of promotion behind him so that to me was a bigger story than just uh, uh, this uh, a company to be presented which was a, a, a you know bar chain uh, which was done but the relationship was very very important it was a, a tremendous amount of relationship they were backed by the top players in the industry to me that was very important so if your business is really having a lot of these suppliers around you how do you are being backed by them how they are working with you how much they are committed with you like chroma today we also advise chroma it's a large part of a, a, a retail chain of of tata uh, group now they have a very strong relationship with their vendors and suppliers each chroma store would get lakhs and lakhs of rupees from each store uh, by their different oems so samsung would put a certain money uh, apple would put a certain money and some other players would get that so they get an that independent retailers don't get that uh because they are not uh, in the space of where chroma is so that business model really is is very strong and that's why uh, they get better not only the better margins but they do a lot of promotions with them they put in a lot of activities they actually choose chroma as a as a point to launch products and these relationships to me are very very important how your suppliers are are working with you the seventh point is business intelligence now this is where uh, your data has to speak anything which is happening in your business your customer acquisition your retention your cost of customer acquisition cost of service uh, every smallest thing has to be driven by data and that data has to come as a business intelligence and all that pieces should really reflect a lot of things which your business is running to and what are your uh, you know uh, business models is so that's very important that how do you really build your business intelligence and present that business intelligence uh, to your future buyer and that future buyer should really reflect and see through that uh, this business is as very strong especially on the margin side because people buy the business and if you can able to demonstrate somebody that look today's margin would improve next year so next year would get even better and this is backed by data and that's something to me is very very important part and eighth point is <clears throat> another very important aspect is that whenever you are looking for a buyer or you are looking for an investor in your business you get on to a little bit of freeze zone uh, because now especially when you're looking an exit i've seen the businesses which are looking for exit they just become freeze they don't want to really put more money in your own business uh, because they feel that i'm anyway exiting the business and i've seen this many many times and uh, and that period can take you anything from a say 6 months to 1 year and you're not putting more money in the business to me it's a very bad situation because the business is on one side would not improve or grow and rather the mindset would be that you are already detached to a business so business is is having a uh, you know <clears throat> you've lost interest in growing your business that to me is a, is a, again a red flag it could put the valuation reasonably uh, reasonably down and uh, and if you have been in market for some time and people know that you are in market for some time and you not really investing in growing your business it is even a further red flag so how do you really continue to invest and grow your business is very important you need to run the business as you do uh, if you if i i would say that if you design a business to sell you will never sell but if you are building a business for the growth you will always sell so that's something which you need to make a choice you cannot stop and get into freeze you need to continue to improve and and build your business you know uh, to get your key team members to me key team members would play a very very important uh, role in any business transfer i feel feel that resources would play a very integral part of uh, the transfer in that thing especially these days its businesses are around people and uh, and these days uh, almost all businesses even the older industrial point of businesses are also around people so how do you really having this retention of your people uh, with you and how you can demonstrate that these are very high quality people fully experienced and they are ready to for on a shift from a from this to that thing and that to me is a very critical acquisition piece and uh, that piece to me also make a very big difference and a lot of these uh, acquisitions which happen where the the say head office has to be moved to the parent uh, the buyer side and they feel that there is a resistance of the people moving there and they could lose most of the people if they were this transfers are happening they also become a red flag so if you really see that this is much smoother and there is a value for 
uh, people to stick around the company and stay with the new buyer group uh, i would say that this would create a, a better uh, value the final point which is the 10th point is that how do you give the overall organization which you taking to the market a larger face lift uh, this is to me in investment banking we call dress the bright how you dress the bright take the fatigue out of the business uh, have the business been refreshed uh, you know recently we have advising one again a retail kind of business a retail business uh, and is fashion and uh, business is been quite old and uh, running for but i think three decades uh, but last particularly uh four or five years since they've been in actually looking for an actively looking for a buyer and they've not got it but the business is absolutely fatigued it's uh, just not having anything they're not coming with new ranges new designs they're not doing their launches their fashion shows nothing is happening the business is really running on some you know older subscriber base and they were still trying to do that balance sheet is still okay balance sheet is not gone down but the business is fatigued it has and i told the promoter and say it's you are in a fashion business if you don't have the vibrance with you if you don't have the new collections and you are really talking about you get opinion makers talk about it you get a social influencers talk about it if all that is not happening nobody is going to buy into your fashion business anyway it's a it's a business which is indian fashion brand you are anyway having challenge to really compete with the western brands coming in which are much more vibrant high on design cutting edge uh, you know uh, design sense and here we are competing there and that's where your business has gone down and you not even keeping your business relevant so how would that work so you need to really see through that how do you continue to build and build your face lift of the business and uh, this we in our investment way term say dress the bride it's a like in property when you want to sell a house uh, uh, don't sell it without painting it and getting it designed again and a little bit of touches can give you a better price and that's what good consultants really do actually they sometimes take a house do a remodeling and design it a little bit better dress it better and then put it in the market and that's where you get a uh, bigger returns so i'll just repeat it the 10 points we touched upon if somebody wants to make notes you can uh, the first point is set yourself apart uh, find your own niche second is build your strength and say what is the unlock points you have in your business which can be attractive for buyer for especially for a future performance streamline your operations show that this is very very productive infrastructure you have anything which is not productive take it out of the system uh, create your strong leadership structure uh, build your uh, new customer base continue customer basis and i think that means the business is extremely relevant uh, what is your supplier group telling you which is the sixth point how your suppliers are are integrated with you almost everybody who is integral part of your business or sport part of your business is strongly integrated with with the or uh, uh, pieces and a good efficient businesses have their suppliers are absolutely married to that business in a very right sense uh, but not locked in you know another very important point is that don't do any kind of contracts which which puts a buyer into a problem that you have to live with something which which is uh, you know not defined like recently one of the companies we were advising and the, the key supplier was a machinery supplier wanted to sign a 5 year uh, contract to supply and i told the founder that not to sign that deal because 5 uh, year was a very long period and this uh, uh, would not be the new buyer might not like to buy the same machine and he would like to replace it it was a critical piece of that business and so that way uh, you you have to be very careful that you need to have very binding its uh, suppliers but not to get into a point where it can become a, a roadblock for a new buyer to come in then you have to have a business intelligence how do you build uh, data points in your company every single thing has a data point and data point can clearly reflect how you are going to be running and growing the business and going forward and specifically if you can demonstrate scale uh, for, for a new buyer a new buyer likes that if i get in there this is a data points if i change these few things the business can go 2x or 3x and so on so forth another uh, eighth point is keep yourself uh, invested in the business continue to grow your business don't wait for a buyer don't bring in a freeze situation if you bring in a freeze situation you already started declining your valuation uh, hold your key people uh, these key people are assets to you uh, and they need to be ready for the mindset of moving with the new uh, uh, setup and if they are not and they surprise you at a moment then you can also have a challenge on on that piece and finally do a facelift bring the bring the best out of you and do a new brand communication all that pieces which are touch points for your organization has to come up so these were 10 points which we wanted to share this is uh, 
uh, some of the suggestions I would do, especially for businesses who are now looking to either invest, uh, get uh, raise money, or even looking at an exit of the business. So I'd like to bring in Sonali back, and if she has some questions, because it's thirty minutes, I've already done about thirty two. So if you have questions, Sonali, I'll be more than happy to take it. Uh, sure, sir. Thank you so much for another uh, very insightful session for all of us. I'm sure it was helpful to all our attendees watching. And yes, we do have quite a few questions uh, lined up with us. Uh, the first question I would like to take up is: uh, I'm looking to sell my gym business due to inability to focus on it due to other commitments. Is it the right time? I mean, will I get interested buyers since the market is down at the moment? Yeah, actually, uh, depends on where you are and what is the strategic uh, value in the business. Kind of equipment you uh, made. Uh, we just uh, did one big deal. in november uh, for a gym in in bandra in the bomb you uh, so that was uh, to me very strategic uh, it had uh, one of the locations which was very attractive from bandra the parking is a big issue so that was the location which can give you what a 50 car parking uh, because it was an office block and and there was a, a parking dumps here and in the morning because office people don't come in so they they agreed to give the extra parking for this so you have morning hours and you have uh, late evening hours so so the, the lot of strategic value was there in the in the asset and and we were able to conclude that transaction so it really depends on where your gym is what what is the size of the gym who can be uh, the buyer at this stage i am very clear that do not be a financial investor purely who would just come in unless and until it's still making money i would have resistance on a financial buyer but yeah, yes strategic yes if somebody is already running and operating or wants to uh, uh, shift its current location because that's not that great and you can come down to the other location but what all is there in the business uh, needs to be seen but there is always a buyer uh, there is always a buyer how do we really define value uh, would be important uh, I, i would like to go into a little more depth into where you are and with no obligation if you send me a mail i will tell you is it right or not right and you also have to see that if if the reason is that you are not able to concentrate itself and it is not doing well then better is to find a exit right now rather than waiting another 6 months to lose money if it is losing money i'm sure because of what is going on the business would not be and if you are already out of the interest then uh, your situation 6 months down the line it would not going to be any better and this is also mistake a lot of people do you know so they they just keep dragging and and becomes a even more difficult uh, at a certain stage so if you if you feel that that you, you have to really call the timing uh, which is very important uh, for for you to take this absolutely uh, the next question we have is when doing marketing in different environments which is countries with a lot of changes in culture how to actually create an impact so this is a little um, you know question which is which is not related so much to on on resale and, and i think you just doing that how do you really uh, Uh, market yourself in different countries uh, i think the value system remain same how principle is implemented in that so it's a mix of uh, what i say uh, principles remain absolutely same what you stand for and what what your value system is uh, and uh, but you uh, give a freedom to final localization uh, of that delivery of content that it reaches in the same kind of a situation to our people uh, like for example i'm i'm wearing this uh, pin which is a remax which is one of my companies uh, it runs in 115 countries it's a largest uh, real estate broking company it's a service based business but they stand for home buyers better professionalism and things like that so that remains same but every country they would go out and regionalize a little bit because sensitivity of uh, communication would change very differently uh, home buying in india is very you know is very look very differently home buyer is looking more security return on his investment uh, he wants a long term uh, piece whereas in us it's very lifestyle it's about so what you sell in us is very different uh, you will sell more uh, backyard with barbecue and these are the things in india you will sell for something else you know you would like to uh, give things which are more important uh, uh, for like a gated community and security and things of that nature which are which are by large uh, default in some developed country uh, you are you are giving more uh, emphasis on that so that changes you need to really see where you are marketing and what would be the critical pieces for the consumer to really do that but you still stand for professionalism you still stand for uh, you know 
so the values don't change uh, you, uh, the communication or the, the final impact points might change in every communication absolutely very well said sir uh, the next question we have is i'm a strong follower of the series and ha- have heard you say this multiple times but each time i get this question in my mind if the business is not dependent much on the owner it makes me feel insecure that i as an owner can be replaced at any point of time as i'm not looking to exit my business anytime soon any suggestions you have for me in this case you know so uh, you know i've been myself a big believer of uh, founder being integral and i've i've been a victim of myself you know i have my position in my own organization which sometimes become very difficult you know to replace yourself uh, in that sense so but truth is that's not something which is right uh, you know if uh, franchise india which is largest company in the world in franchising is totally dependent on me and i am not getting younger so it's a uh, it's it's not going to really be having uh, genuinely value and and, uh, and this i am telling from my own experience you know i was doing a term sheet uh, with the very big investors were in one of my parts of businesses and uh, and over a dinner this this investor would told me that look uh, while i like that he was so involved in the business but honestly i don't like it so much uh, so so i uh, i i see the point and i see the point that if if today they are investing on me and i am the one who's going out uh, uh, and i the business is totally dependent on me then then what am i getting in this right so uh, making yourself redundant in the business doesn't mean that your opinions and your contribution has no value it has great value but it is not only dependent on you you have created a structure which we can revive without you and more you create that structure it's actually would come from you but you, it takes a hard way to let loose you know and give it to others to really do that it's a very difficult decision for entrepreneurs to do it but uh, and entrepreneurs who do it very efficiently uh, are great you know there's a young guy which is uh, actually recently he got uh, um you know his wife delivered and and he's just uh, very young he's done two sales already one company sold was uh, innovate uh, to oyo rooms uh, it's a co-working space and earlier again he had a tech startup which he's is is dr ritesh uh, young guy but he's good he's good he builds his business very efficiently defines all the processes very system driven everything was very system driven so any company would easily buy him uh, so that's where he he is doing it right and a lot of people i know are not able to do it they're too involved in their business uh, and they're putting the personal effort rather than putting systems and processes in the business and and that's something which we i come from a classic uh, background why can i can tell what not to do but i have done it in my own organization too much you know that everything revolves around uh, sometimes around me in some part of business some part of business are, i am not involved uh, and these businesses are run by professional teams or somebody else but in some part of business uh, i'm too involved and 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 that's not good for investor i'm not even not looking for a, uh, any entire thing but if i was putting myself out and say looking at that part of my business and say that, that people would not really have any sense on that business so sure, sir uh, the next question that we have is any special advice on gaining employees trust when the company is not doing very well and they feel unsafe about their future in the company transparency transparency is the only answer uh, uh you cannot when you are not doing well everybody knows about it uh and more than anybody else your frontliners know more than anybody else uh they they know everything about when you're not doing well and you need to be transparent about it and uh, and i can tell you when you are transparent uh, you will get uh, stakeholders you know these are co-founders to me while they've not invested with you but they're co-founders they would stand by and uh, they will rise to occasion and uh, they would try to do that but if you are and that's where problem happens you know there's nobody who's not got into problem you know the best of the entrepreneurs uh, these days uh, you know trolling is going on on nil ambani uh, entire thing i i've seen uh, you know his uh, you know to the early 2000 and how he built businesses and how he took these businesses from nothing to really creating em- enterprises which are billion dollar plus and uh, and there was a time where even that you know business is not doing well so if he if he stays in that mode and and continue to sound which is not actually it's good that he's accepted in public that he's not ready in that but so people get into that mode they, they stop accepting the problem right <clears> that <throat> there is a problem and if you prolong that situation and not accept and not be transparent to your stakeholders then you are in a problem 
uh, but if you accept that any business there is no business uh, which would not have a, a difficult cycles uh, they would have difficult cycles or take everybody out and tell them that we are in a difficult cycle and this is the plan you have and and if they they have a opinion on that plan and if they have feedback take that feedback positively and then you can go out and and achieve the goals and you can also put up a long term plan for people uh, you know, i i honestly feel that if startups people who start from garage can attract talent and say join with me we have something great happening why would businesses which are doing already at a certain stage can get the same feeling the only thing you need to come in acceptance of where you are and and say let's like, let's do a new journey let's take it from here to this level we understood what didn't work but what would work for us uh, and at this stage almost every 60 70% of all businesses i would say would be in the same situation you if you are in that situation then you're not alone 60% of all businesses are in some form of difficulty you know and uh, even thriving businesses uh, uh, you know uh, were not doing well at this moment so they have to come with acceptance uh, that uh, there is a, there is, has to be a bit of a work to be done before it can start shining again sure sir uh, the next two three questions that we have are actually uh, topics that can actually be taken up as a whole session one of the questions uh, is your views on how hiring a coach can help to increase the valuation of a business uh, yeah, and so we so this we can be a good topic we can take up uh, next time or next next time whatever with sonali pits it and diving and she has a sequence we do yeah. invest value exit and and uh, what else scale so this can be a coach to scale uh, kind of an answer uh, we run a we are part of the world's biggest coaching company called action coach so we can, i can give some tips on that absolutely uh, another uh, suggestion that we have is please do a session on the kind of documentation required while buying a business on a value fair for both the parties how, how do you do documentation it's a, what i i think we did some session where we talked about uh, um, information it was the last visit session that we did uh, yeah. so if you can refer so ali can send you that edition we did that uh, piece uh, while we, uh, if you want some physical uh, documentation to be shared we're more than happy to tell that some of the valuation reports which we have uh, but uh, uh, we did that session on on what do you need in a information memorandum absolutely and uh, lastly uh, the last question we have is what do you think are the top most parameters or points every business should look at who is b2c uh, to track growth and get high valuation which is again something very similar that we have done uh, in the past uh, episodes as well yeah so so there are all parameters again issue is that whatever you've done in past please try to understand if you are looking for valuation or a potential exit whatever you have done in past has no relevance uh, people buy into your future if anything in your past done which reflects a great future and you are able to back that with a strong data that is the only a thing would come for your merit anything else which was there so oh i was in 2015 at the top we were having the market share and i think these are all emotional discussion which you have has no meaning for somebody because i sit in a meeting and people talk about 5 years back oh, we were a number one market share everything was around us and then this happened and that happened people started bringing product from china it got reduced it has no meaning when you were a top or not top but you lost a market share you lost a market share and unless and you can give me a signals that last four months we 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 are going grow and there is a absolutely uh, trend what five years back and three years back it has no meaning it's a it's a myth which people live in uh, historic data uh, are only about uh, if you have a subscriber retention which you have subscribers which are there and they're retaining to continue to do with you then there is the case for a merit for our showing future but there is also dying now because uh, like geo announced that i will not do voice uh, charges now if if anybody would have phone or anybody collectively says oh because we used to make so much money in this they want to lose subscribe they need to match him you know every time he will keep keep throwing in a challenge and you need to go and match him and your business model is not saying that and people would would move from your network to another network you're not able potential to retain it then valuation is continue to go down you know and that's exactly what is happening is pushing so much to put their valuation at a lower level and a lower level and a lower level and there would be time where they would raise hand and say okay buy us out at a at a ridiculous valuation and that subscriber would go into somebody else and uh, because you will erode your valuation you're not able to retain your customer base and 
and continue to do that. And that's what is the case looking like to me, uh, that every single movement is not really helping Geo's business so much, but it is effectively taking away the competition's valuation out of the game. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, with this, uh, we'll just wrap up our Q&A uh, session, Gaurav sir. Thank you so much for another wonderful session and uh, for very patiently answering all our questions like always. Uh, quoting Mr. Kapil as he said in the chat box that uh, it was a very crisp and extremely valuable session. Uh, so thank you so much once again. Anything you would like to say in the end? No, thank you very much. Have a have a very uh, uh, great year ahead. Uh, plan yourself well. This is first few days. Don't rush into going back and repeating your business and whatever you're doing. Don't don't rush into that. Maybe take a week for you to go and say what differently you can do for what you've been doing and how it can significantly improve your future of the business. And uh, and that answers are always available with founders, but they don't get that time. They don't get that those two days, three days to really question everything. Everything you do, question itself. Why I'm doing the, this way? Why not other way around? And if you get that kind of uh, answers, you will see that you will find a lot of answers for, for whatever you do. So thank you very much, Sonali, for hosting this uh, uh, again and uh, we'll continue to bring in whatever little knowledge we have thank you thank you so much sir thank you to all our attendees uh, for uh, attending this session we really hope we were able to add value to your lives through this session a very happy and new if you year are for looking for yeah. if you are looking for uh, getting some kind of help in terms of valuation and also looking at some uh, help on uh, exit or bringing investor in your business then also reach out to sonali she has a, a team and uh, we have a team of uh, evaluators. We have a team of uh, consultants who can help you uh, get the right uh, uh, sport for your business. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you to all our attendees. We'll see you next Saturday at 3 p.m. for another session uh, of the Business X Learning Series. Thank you so much. Thank you.